So, here we go. I'm gonna show you the process, see how it goes. I hope you enjoy. Let's do this. Um, I mean, rugby, when I was when I was playing rugby, I was a young man in school and I believe the kind of rugby training, schoolboy rugby training has come a long way since then. Um, but we were just doing the regular kind of training by being on, on the field with the ball and we weren't necessarily spending loads of time at the gym. Uh, but uh, as far as Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is concerned, uh, having trained with Hodger Gracie, yeah, I've tried to uh, incorporate some of those things, but sometimes it can be tricky. Uh, as much as I love BJJ and and the sport that it is and what it stands for and 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 what it feels like to do is 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 fantastic. It's not necessarily the most cinematic of sports or martial arts. It tends to look a lot like two people cuddling rather than fighting, and then one of them goes to sleep. <laughs> Usually, usually I go with the vanilla. Uh, the chocolate's still good with the berries and oatmeal, uh, but it feels a little heavier for a breakfast. Um, I found the, when it was winter for some reason, I, the chocolate and berries and oatmeal uh, was a fantastic combo, but in the summer, I prefer the 100% grass-fed vanilla with the uh, oatmeal and, and berries. Um, it's, it's a good question. Uh, the, the question of able versus just forcing it in and making it happen uh, are two different things. <laughs> and um, I, I do my utmost to get in four sessions a week, Monday to Friday. And if there's a facility to train, e either if I've set one up at my house or if there's one at the studio, I will, I will use that. And whether it be pre-dawn or whether it be post-work and and just trying to get one in before going to bed, it's an absolute necessity and uh, it's very, very important. Uh, I haven't experienced that yet. I mean, obviously Arnie had a fair bit more muscle mass than <laughs> I have had, uh, but it's, th there's, it's something which I'm toying with, the idea of. Uh, I, I, it's always difficult because you go through, especially with uh, traveling around a lot and not having facilities to train at all the time and things always being in flux, one can end up going through peaks and troughs of uh, being in shape or having the right kind of muscle mass or the right kind of lean muscle. And so all you're doing is you're targeting getting back into that shape for a role. Now that uh, I'm, I'm starting to establish and set up more of a regular set of facilities for myself, no matter where I am in the world, it is going to make it easier for me to be finessing and toying with my, my physicality uh, and, and where my body sits at. So there may indeed come a time where I'm going to try and, and, and drop a little bit of muscle and, and get super, super lean to look a certain way for a job. But it all depends on the job and um, it hasn't happened yet, but it may very well happen in the future. Um, I, I do not yet, but I'm getting those things set up and um, it, it's, it's a huge investment, uh, but it's something that I've come to realize is a worthwhile investment because with my, my, my physicality being so important to a lot of my roles, it's, uh, it's something which to have it, for example, setting up in the same way that uh, The Rock, uh, Dwayne has his, his, he has a marquee with all his gym equipment in and to have that outside your house. So either you get up early and you go to gym before you go to work or you get home 
you can put your feet up and then go, right, I'm going to go crush a workout and it's right there. That is enormously helpful. And um, while nothing on that scale just yet, it's definitely something that I'm, I'm investing in to, to make the whole thing a, a more efficient process. Uh, the hamstring was probably the worst one. Uh, I did, however, have a partial tear of my LCL um, uh, during Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, in fact. And uh, that required a little bit of recovery, but no way near as bad as the uh, grade two hamstring tear. That was, that was quite unpleasant. I didn't like that. Uh, at the moment, no, I, I don't. That was uh, enormously helpful for the hamstring recovery and building up all the muscles, the small muscles around it. Uh, the Copenhagen plank, if I remember correctly, really focused on adductor and it, it helped that enormously. And that was required for support with my sprinting and, and everything else. Otherwise, the hamstring was going to take too much on it. And we wanted to rehab the hamstring without causing it any further damage or anything else around it either. And so that kind of stuff, which uh, Freddie Murray, my physio at the time, uh, was, was taking me through, was all essential towards the recovery of the hamstring. I would say the first time I was introduced to using sports supplements was way back from Man of Steel when I was working with Mark Twight and his then assistant, uh, Michael Blevins, who later became my trainer as well. And um, it was, yeah, that was the first time I was really introduced to it in, 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 a, in a big way. Of course, I, I've, I've gone far deeper down that rabbit hole now. And uh, especially uh, not being quite the spring chicken that I was, it's important to make sure that I have all of that supplementary uh, support to make sure that my body is firing on all cylinders and I'm gaining the most from all these hard workouts that I do on top of a hard work day. Well, it was two things. It was uh, having a, a long and storied history in that company. And you know that uh, they're going to go for, when it came to uh, making sure they're going to take that next step, there's, they're going to take major steps to doing. It. And yeah. the quality of ingredients was enormously important. And not only that, but the second thing was their, their idea of this strength redefined, which is strength uh, it takes more than just muscle. And I, this is something which I've been trying to uh, share with people uh, across my, my fan base and my followers, is that yes, uh, training very hard in the gym and having great trainers and everything is, is fantastic and it really helps towards stuff, but it's not the key ingredient. The key ingredient is something that we all have in us. And that is that strength, that perseverance, that determination. and. Things like that we have available to all of us. And I love that Muscle Tech, which is this, this storied supplement company, is saying that it's not about, it's not necessarily about muscles. It's about what you have inside first that leads to the muscles. And here's a whole bunch of fantastic quality ingredients with many access points, whether it be their elite level, whether it be their mid level, whether it be their starter level, which makes it easier for people to think, you know what, I can do it too. And I think that's the key thing. It's just giving people that sense of belief and keying into, into that inner strength of theirs. And when, when we started speaking and Muscle Tech had that branding and that idea and that message which they were sending out, that's the kind of thing which, which I think is important and has proven to be very important, especially over uh, the recent trials and tribulations we've been going through with COVID. Oh, the favorite flavor? I, I wouldn't say I have a favorite flavor. That's okay. the kind of thing where, I mean, I, the watermelon is one which I've been doing a lot of just because it's the one I had um, on tap recently. And um, it's, I, I like that, it's refreshing, it's light. It's the kind of thing which, because when you're working out, I was working out in Florida a lot recently as well. It's 
900 degrees, you're sweating. You don't really want something which is too uh, sweet and heavy, but you do want something which has a little bit of sweetness to it. And the watermelon one works really well for me. Um, I mean, many, many moons ago, uh, I, I, I played around with it. But this is before I was uh, sort of going through very physical stages and, and training very hard. I haven't tried it recently. Um, and the, the trick with that is it's just making sure that your stomach can handle it. And it's uh, it works for some people. Um, I haven't tried it recently myself, as I say. But one thing I have learned is that if you find something that works for you, keep on doing that. And every single body is different. It responds in different ways. And indeed, that response will change over the years as the body ages, as it gets used to things, or as it, as it, as it adapts, or as it has different external influences on it, um, it changes. And so if it, if it works for you, then yeah, go for it. Uh, well, how I trained 10 years ago was with a, a different trainer and um, it was a very different style of training. It was uh, more sort of uh, functional fitness and not, not CrossFit style, but kind of it was the pre-CrossFit style. And um, how I'm training now is, is all about creating an aesthetic. I'm now also implementing um, sprints in to create a bigger engine as well because uh, the engine's going to benefit my, my work life, um, having that fitness uh, inbuilt. But also the, the, the kind of training I do now, which is a lot of the bodybuilding type stuff, that is useful for work because it can create that certain aesthetic without exhausting me before a, a long shoot day. And that kind of stuff, if you're doing exhausting workouts and a long shoot day, it's maintainable for a short period of time, but if I'm going from job to job to job over a two year period, uh, I need to make sure that I can be getting my training in without crushing myself so I can actually do the thing which I'm supposed to be there for, which is performing a realistic character and entertaining the audience. Uh, I tell you what, I mean, it, it's difficult to say, hey Cap, it's difficult to say um, there are any uh, particularly, I, I wouldn't want to name any one name. I think all bodybuilders, one thing is that I've, I've learned a lot of respect for them and what they do. It's uh, to get to that level, to put on that kind of mass, to have that kind of control and discipline, and then to get that lean, that is yeah. insane. Like the, the level of lean is, is, is the crazy bit while maintaining that size. And it's, um, it's extraordinary. I went to watch Danny Garcia, uh, my yep. manager, yep. Uh, perform and uh, do, a, do a show. And to see it in real life is enormously inspirational. To see these, these ladies up on stage who were the, the, just the musculature and, and the level of lean on them was extraordinary and it was like nothing else i've seen before and that was inspiration uh but so i wouldn't want to name anyone yeah. any one particular person but it is I, for those people out there who haven't tried it it is it beyond difficult to get to that that level and uh, my, my hats are off to them for sure Um, in the off season, absolutely. Uh, depending if there's if there's any rugby going on as well, yes. that definitely that definitely helps. Uh, but I, I I do I do love to maintain a balance between work, training, and lifestyle. Uh, there's one thing that sitting at home and staring at the walls has taught me is that life is is here to enjoy and to live. And um, I want to live it healthily, but I also want to have fun doing it. And so it's about it's about finding that balance. And so absolutely, I think there's always there's always room for a pint here and there. Oh well, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure talking to you today, and uh, hopefully we'll get to speak again soon.